In our American culture, there is not a dish quite as esteemed as a well-made pie. Today I'm going to teach you how to make my pie crust recipe in two ways. The first is using a food processor, which is perfect for churning out large amounts of pastry in a short amount of time. Secondly, I will show you how to make an excellent pie crust by hand, which is the most historic method and I'll admit the best as far as flakiness and deliciousness. This is a recipe I've made and taught in countless in-person classes and with my children during our annual pie day where I make a special pie with each of my children, just the two of us. The one-to-one -one ratio of lard to high quality butter in this formula makes this recipe ideal when it comes to flakiness, texture, taste, and malleability so you can make a beautiful pie. It's very important that your butter and lard be cubed and frozen before you start to make your pie crust. When using my food processor to make my pie crust, I can make a lot at one time, so I double the standard recipe. These large ramekins full of frozen lard and butter are for the food processor. The smaller ramekins of lard and butter are half the quantity of these ones, and they are for making the pie crust by hand. Usually I make my pie crust with the food processor, but sometimes if I'm just making one pie, I'll just use the hand method. Although I have to tell you, it's always a little bit better when you make it by hand. To make my pie crust with the food processor, measure out three cups of all-purpose flour into the bowl of your food processor. Measure in one teaspoon of salt and two tablespoons of sugar. Just were that to combine. Were W-H, uh, W-H-R-R-R. <laughs> Just give it a few whirs to uh, incorporate those dry ingredients. I also have ice cold water ready to go. And then feed the food processor your cubed and frozen, they're very cold, blocks of lard and butter. Your flour mixture is going to start clumping together just a little bit and that is when you know you are on the right track. You'll be able to clump it together in your hand and it will stick kind of like wet sand. Now I have my bowl of ice cold water right here and I am going to measure in six tablespoons of the ice cold water one at a time. You can see the mixture is starting to clump up a little bit here at the bottom of the food processor. And when it starts to form kind of its own mass, you know you're almost done. It's very important, okay, to note that when you are working with pastry, you never get creative, okay? What I mean is, Follow the recipe, okay? Do not substitute uh, white flour for wheat flour, okay? If you're feeling a little insecure and you're thinking, wait, this can't be right, this doesn't look right, do not add more flour, do not add more lard, do not add more butter, and for heaven's sake, never add more water, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had to say this in every class I've ever taught. All right, I've got a little flour here for my surface. Just lightly dust, okay? Just, just a little bit like that. If it sticks together like clay, you know you're on the right track, okay? Now, this may be a little different for you depending on the temperature of your kitchen and depending on the climate where you live, all right? I find that Germany is a really great pastry um, <laughs> climate, so I hope we stay here for a while. Um, all right, so I've just turned out all of my pastry 
onto my flowered surface, okay? Now, uh, of course, this is a pastry. We don't need this, all right? But I am going to kind of clump it together, just get all these stray bits in, and kind of roll it together like this, okay? Now this recipe makes enough for two standard size pies or one deep dish pie, okay? And can you guess which most of my pie recipes are uh, written for uh, deep dish? Okay, hello. So anyway, we get this nice log here just like this, okay? You can see I haven't overworked it. I've just kind of kept it together. And basically, I like to think of pastry as kind of, you know, they have, it, it has its own mind, okay? So we just wanna gently suggest, all right now, we're just gonna roll you into this little log here. I've got my pastry cutter, and we're just gonna guillotine these two pieces, okay? And we have two lovely pieces of pastry okay now this is how I store it I store it in these little like hockey puck sizes and I just wrap it in a plastic wrap just like this And these lovely little hockey pucks of pastry will keep a week in your fridge or about three months in your freezer. If you're gonna freeze them, I suggest wrapping them two or three times, okay, in a uh, plastic wrap. And on days where I'm really churning out the pastry before my family's pie day or before I'm making a lot of pies, you know, for whatever reason, sometimes I'll have as many as a dozen of these just stacked up everywhere, okay? And so with that food processor, you can really just assembly line the entire process. Um, and that's why it's important to have your water in this large container, okay? And all of your components around you so you can just churn it through, okay? So next I'm gonna show you how to make this recipe by hand, okay? Because we are going to use our hands, we're going to cut our food processor recipe in half. So I've got one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of sugar. I just work on the surface you can also use a bowl to do this, especially if you're a beginner. I recommend kind of a flat-bottomed bowl, uh, much like this bowl. I like how the bottom is flat. You can do a lot with a flat-bottomed bowl, I've found. So I'm just using my hands, my fingers, to mix up the dry component of this recipe. Now remember how with the food processor, we used the, uh, the mechanism to mix up the dry component, and then we went ahead and added the fat component, okay? So I have the fat component here, which is a quarter cup of butter and a quarter cup of lard. And I am just going to squeeze these in between my thumb and my forefinger and really what I'm doing is I'm not just squeezing, but I'm pushing, okay? Because what we're doing is we're creating little sheets of fat. And if you've noticed, the best pastry has tiny micro sheets of the fat component. If you find this to be a little tedious, you can also take two knives and one in each hand, slice them in the opposite direction of each other. You can also use a pastry cutter, but I actually don't have any here in Germany, 
they are all back in the United States in storage. And I haven't uh, found the need to replace them here. So I suppose that says something <laughs> about my preferences on uh, pastry tools. Sometimes I switch to the knife method just to give the butter a chance to warm up a little bit so it's not so hard on my hands. If you relax and take your time, you will find that this is really quite therapeutic. I think it's extremely good for your spirit. You can use 100% butter in this recipe if you wish. I find, however, that the lard gives it more of a crackle and makes it just a little more flaky. All right, I have these nice big kind of sheets of butter. And I'm going to push my flour mixture back together. And I'm going to create a well in the middle of my flour mixture. Get my ice cold water ready again and my tablespoon measure. And we're going to add three tablespoons of water to our flour and fat mixture. Try to keep all the moisture on the inside here. And I just take small bits of the dry component and mix it up very carefully as I go. This is why sometimes using a bowl is a good idea if you're a beginner. you can see it kind of makes a bit of a paste in the middle and now it's starting to incorporate well and we just fold this in I can feel the cold water on my hands and this is when I think a lot of times people get nervous and they think oh no I've done something wrong okay because this doesn't look like pie and uh, they get very nervous and they start to panic and they start to think I should add more water, I should add more butter, I should add more flour. And I'm just telling you that that feeling of, <laughs> I call it pie crust anxiety, is totally normal. And you just need to trust the process. The pastry wants to become pastry, okay? It's all forming together. It is all transforming from individual components to a whole new thing, which is our glorious pastry. And so, just like the batch that we did with the food processor, I'm going to just very gently, I'm suggesting to it, okay? Hey, you might just want to clump together and become pastry today. It's important to remember to breathe. Then I very slowly form it into that hockey puck shape. Now this one is going to have a lot more ribboning of the butter and the lard. And that's what's going to make this pie crust actually superior to our food processor pie crust. Wrap it in plastic wrap once again. And here we have our handmade 
pie crust. I'm cleaning up my surface right now because I'm going to teach you next how to blind bake a pie shell. But I wanted to show you that when I'm cleaning my surface after making a pie, I always use my pastry scraper and I never get water on these little crumbs or you will have a big clump of goo on your surface. So keep it dry as you are kind of scraping up your crumbs and then you'll keep things nice and orderly and you won't frustrate yourself. Rolling out a pie crust is easy and straightforward as long as you follow just a few rules. I've got my freshly made pie crust here. I find that I can use my food processor pie crust about an hour after I mix it, after it's had time to kind of settle down. I've lightly floured my surface and now I'm going to just show you how I roll out my pie crust, okay? First of all, it's important to never apply too much pressure at one time. I like to use this rolling pin. As you can see, I have several rolling pins. And a standard rolling pin like this is my favorite for rolling out pies. I have just applied a small amount of pressure to kind of flatten it this way. And now I'm going to turn it, okay? My goal here is to maintain a circular shape, okay? And so I think especially like with new um, like beginners or children, there is a real um, instinct to kind of just press it down and steamroll it, right? But you really just need to take your time. Now, as you go through this method where you're, you're rolling it this way, you're turning it, Go ahead and uh, look at these little cracks and fissures that form along the edges and just take a minute and push them back in, okay? Because remember, our goal here is to maintain a circular shape. Turning it again and I'm going to just check these edges again for any fissures. And now I can get just a little more liberal with my movement of my rolling pin. Periodically, I will check to make sure I have enough flour under the surface. I like to work with a, uh, a raw wood surface. I find that a wood surface kind of holds the tiny particles of flour really well for working with pastry. And I can, at this point, kind of move my shoulders to one side. I am moving the rolling pin towards me and also away from me. My goal here, and I am keeping in mind the fact that I am trying to maintain a circular shape. I have just a little fissure here that I want to take care of. I'm just going to go around. going to give this a couple more rolls. Now I can tell just by eyeballing this that this will fit nicely in my pie pan. Um, some people like to use uh, measurement uh, mats, but I've actually never found those to be really helpful. So there are two ways we can get this into this. And uh, one way is to uh, fold it into fourths and take 
the point of your pastry and arrange it right in the middle of your pie plate and then unfold your pastry. The other way to move your pastry into your pie pan is to use your rolling pin to roll up the pastry and then to unroll it. Each way works really well. I am going to blind bake this pie crust. A blind bake is when you actually bake the pie shell without any filling in it, okay? And that's the kind of pie shell you need for a lot of cream pies, like my chocolate cream pie recipe, for custard pies, and so um, also for uh, those strawberry pies where the strawberries are actually raw and then uh, a glaze is poured over them, that uses a blind baked pie shell. So I want to go ahead and show you how to blind bake a pie shell because I wanted this uh, video to be primarily about the construction of the pastry and not so much the full pie or the fillings of the pie. So I would be able to reference this video um, in the future when I teach you my different pie recipes. So what I have here are pie weights, okay? You can also use dry beans for this very purpose. And what this is for, um, these are to hold down the pie shell so it doesn't bubble up while you bake it. I like to use a piece of parchment paper. And I kind of just curl the parchment paper around the edge of the pie crust. And I find that also protects it from the heat of the oven. So just pour in your pie weights. You can buy these in any baking shop or the A store and just use them over and over again. If you use a dried bean, uh, like a black bean or a pinto bean or a kidney bean, um, you can reuse them maybe two or three times, but after that, be sure and throw them away. And I don't think that they're really good to cook uh, and eat after you use them in a pie shell like this. So I am going to blind bake my pie now with the weights in it. And I'm gonna put these in a 350 degree oven. It's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes. And I'm gonna be sure to check, however, just to make sure the bottom of the crust is cooked through. My baked pie shell has just come out of the oven and I can see by peeking underneath this parchment paper and kind of pressing on the bottom that the bottom of it is baked through. For this pie, it took about 18 minutes at 350 degrees. So now I am just going to lift out the pie weights and put them back into a container and they are ready for the next time I use them. These are ceramic pie weights. This pie shell is now ready to be filled with any number of fillings like a chocolate custard for a chocolate cream pie, any uh, pie filling that does not need to be cooked after the pie is filled. So I wanted to be able to teach you this, but I thought this was an appropriate time at the end of this pie crust class, okay? But um, now we can make all kinds of pies here on this channel. Now that you know my methods, now that you know how I put together uh, a pie pastry, and um, I'm really excited to share more pie recipes with you. Please follow me on my socials and also find this recipe on my website, theflyingkitchen.com. You can print it out, 
there are more instructions on that post and on that recipe and um, please subscribe to this channel and come back for more creative and inspired cooking from my kitchen to yours here at the flying kitchen thanks so much